Hello and welcome to my channel. It's been a while since I last uploaded a video, so thank you to everyone who's decided to join me today for this Canvas Workspace tutorial. I certainly appreciate your support. Thank you very much indeed. Now today's project was inspired by an SVG file which I saw for this item here. This is a mini milk crate it's very easy to make and i thought this would be a nice little addition to my craft desk of course you don't have to use it for uh, storage of craft items you could use this even as a gift box if you like but it is very easy to make and it goes together very quickly once you've cut it and if you'd like to learn how to make your own mini milk crate, then stick with me and I'll show you how. I'm going to start by bringing in a square. And in this instance, I'm going to make this a three by three milk crate. Of course, you can make it any size you like. You don't have to go with this size. I'm also going to give it some color so that we can see everything a little better. Also bring in a photograph of the project. And if we zoom in on that, we'll see it has a handle here in the middle and then these cutouts along the sides and the bottom and then of course on the bottom here these diamond shapes now you don't have to stick with this um, you can change it however you like maybe eliminate these um, slots here and change the diamonds to something else like squares or circles, ovals, whatever you like. And I may change it up a little bit myself as I go along. So let's go back to the square that we have here. As I said, that's going to be a three by three. You also have on one of the sides a glue flap but we'll place that a little bit later on I'm going to bring in the two shapes that I'm going to use for the top portion and that's going to be this bevel edge rectangle and this round one which I'm going to use for the handle I'm not worried about the size at this point because I can always resize these as I go along and for the diamond, bring that in. And I'm going to adjust this by, I can either click off the maintain aspect ratio and click on the height, or I can, of course, just grab the handles and change the size and the shape of that diamond. So I'm going to go with that there. So those are the three shapes that I'll be working with. Just move that out of the way. And I'm going to adjust the sizes of these as far as the height is concerned. Right, and I want three of these in a row. 
So I'm going to duplicate it a couple of times. And then I align everything. I'm going to align it to the left. And then I want to distribute the spacing. So I'm going to try first 1.5 and let's see what that looks like. I may increase that just a little bit. Go to 20. Two zero. There we are. Just going to play with this just a moment till I get it to about the proportions that I want. Going to increase the distance there as well. To duplicate this, so I am going to have these come across the bottom, but I'm going to actually reduce that size. Like that. I'll line those to the bottom and space them out. But I'm going to take these, group them, and duplicate them so that I have them for this size. Just move that out of the way for now. I'm going to select these. And place them at the bottom. And distribute the spacing. Group that and I'll align all of these at the top. Like that. So I'm very happy with that. Of course, it's not going to fit into this little three inch square, so we've got to adjust the size. Just highlight everything, bring it in like that. But something else we need to keep in mind is that there will be a glue flap that's going to attach to one of these sides. So I need to be sure that I've got enough space for that glue flap. I'm going to make that glue flap about five eighths of an inch. So what I'll do just to help me out a bit, I'll bring in this square. I'm going to adjust that to 3.75. I can place it here on the side. And then I'll be able to select these and group them and then adjust them in size. Want them centered. I could just drag and pull on those handles until I get it looking about like I want.
And check one last time for that. And I think that's going to be all right. We have to keep in mind also for the bottom where the diamonds are going to go that we have that gap there as well because we don't want these tabs sticking out through those or showing through those holes. Point three seven five. We want to make sure that our diamonds are above that line there. So let's go back and grab that. There it is over there. I'm going to bring it into the workspace. I need to position it about like so. I'm going to duplicate it. Move that out of the way so I can grab these. I can align them. We align them to the bottom and then I'm going to space them out. I'll space them at, let's try one five. Maybe 12 even. So I need to be sure They're going to not go over where that score line is going to be, or the uh, blue flag is going to be. But I'm going to just go ahead and group them. Central. Right, let's try this. Maybe just a tiny bit smaller, and that should clear that nicely. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> let's duplicate this. And this time, let's offset this. Now, I don't have to worry about the glue flap on this side. What I'm going to do is Group these two together and duplicate them so that I can use those to offset again.
and I'll just align those and group them. Right, that should do it. Then I'll bring in the top portion here. And again, that's going to be aligned. And there's plenty of space there. So we can get rid of that now and let's highlight these and go to process overlap and subtract so that that punches those through. So we have one of our panels done. Next thing I do is duplicate this. Place it next to the first one. I'll align them, aligning them to the bottom. And then I'm going to weld these together. I'm going to overlap them just by a tiny bit. So we'll use the distribute space function and change that to minus 0 0.01 and then click on horizontal distribution and weld them. So we have two of the panels so that's going to be on one side and then we'll put a glue tab on one of these. You can put it on either that side or that side. Just look at the size now. So it's six and we can just change that to six just to make it absolutely precise. Six by three. Now I'm going to make the glue tab. I'm going to make it really easy in this case just bring in another shape and I'll change that to 3.75 as well I'm going to make it slightly smaller than the side here. So at the moment, let's see, let's align it and see. Oops, wrong one. I want the middle. Tiny bit bigger. So let's align that and weld it using the same distribution space as before and click weld. So we have our tab. So it's 6.375 by 3 inches in height. Now I can put score lines in here or I could just use my scoreboard 
to place my score lines in. But I am going to put the score lines in. I'm going to move this main shape here into the corner. And then I can bring in my score line. Make that a little bit longer. I'll change that to a dash line. And what I did there was hold down the shift key at the same time I was dragging that path tool. So we can place it exactly where we need it by going first of all and locking down this shape so it doesn't move about on us. Then we can place this score line where we want it and we want it at three inches and at zero. So we locked out on that one. And just make it a bit smaller, just so it doesn't go past the top there. And that's fine. So now we can duplicate this. We're going to move it. And do that again. Duplicate it. There we are. And we're going to move it into place here. So it should be about six. I actually made it six point one because that will make up for that overlap so that's not too bad so there are our score lines and now I can go back and unlock this give this some color again then I will select these, group them, and duplicate them. So now I have all four sides of the crate complete. For the bottom, I'm going to bring in another square. That's going to be three inches. Let me just move these out of the way. And then I'm going to place my tabs. By creating them the same way I did for the sides of the crate. So point three seven five. And we'll make that about 0 0.91, that's fine. So let's center that. I'll duplicate that. Place it here at the bottom. Just change the angle for this one to 90. And place that one there. So let's get these all aligned. So we'll align those to the center. 
and distribute them the same way we did the others and we can weld those we can do the same here into the middle and this to the center and overlap them and weld them so we have our tabs now what you can do, since you see this little bit here, if you double click that and expose the nodes, let's go back and do that again. You double click that and take this one out, delete that point, and delete the one beneath it and now you have your angled corner for your tab you just do the same over here Oops. mouse is a bit funny today so let's delete that point and delete so now we have that angle, delete that one, delete that one, and then finally we'll delete these two as well. So at this point you could either just go to your scoreboard, place it in, place uh, your cut out into your scoreboard and draw in the score line or of course you could just draw in your score lines one way you could do that is to make another square so we'll make that So let me make it a little bit smaller. And we'll change it to a dash pattern. And then align these together in the middle and in the center. And you have your score lines. So just Creep them, and there is the bottom for your box. I can do that again. So there is the bottom for your box, for your crate, and here are your sides. So we can. We can leave that there if you like because it's not going to send it anywhere if you were to export this now to your machine. But I'll just go ahead and delete that. And I'll place these on the mat. And just as a final note, if you want to line your mini milk crate, then you could, of course, create a, another square so it would go behind and you could either have it completely behind the crate here or perhaps just cover this section in which case as I said you could either make the the uh, cutting file now or you could cut it out on your trimmer or indeed just wait till you get to your machine and if you decide you want to cut it out you could do that then the only thing i would suggest though is that you make sure that it is smaller than the piece that you're going to place it behind because you don't want this to be caught in this fold line for example or 
going all the way out to the edge here. So just reduce it by either a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch, something like that. And that is now ready to send to the machine to be cut out and assembled. So meet me over at the craft desk and I'll show you how this goes together. It's really simple. Peeling off the outer frame. So there's the waist. And now we have the various pieces. Just bend that back. that a little later. Those are the crate pieces, the sides and the bottom, and I have also cut out inserts for the bottom half. So these I cut at one and seven eighths by two and seven eighths so that they would fit just inside of this area here. So I want to hold and burnish these score lines. I've got the central score line as well as the blue tab. And as I said before, you could just come in here and snip off those ends like that if you want. So cut that tab into an angle cut. Do the same on this one. But it's not absolutely necessary. Okay. So we have that one. And then we're going to have this one. So be sure that it's turned the right way around. We'll hold and burnish these two score lines as well. And before I start assembling it, I want to put my liner in. You don't have to put a liner if you don't want to. It's absolutely fine. But I'm going to place my liner in here like that. So I'll just run the glue along these edges here. Like so. And then that will fit inside there because I've cut it smaller, it's not going to go past the score lines. You can see there is our liner. We'll just leave the top portion open because that's like our little handle there. So I'll just go on and complete these other three pieces and then we'll be ready to put it together. Now to assemble the box, you can use a double-sided tape um, or a red liner tape or in my case I'm going to use liquid glue. I'm going to use my Kalal, which is a very strong glue. Just put that back in there. So it's going to fit inside like that to run the glue down this glue tab and then I 
can match those up just like that. So I'll hold it there for a moment, making sure that it's even. It's my bone folder to go over. I'll give that a moment to dry before I move on to the other side. Moving on to the other side now, we're going to put our glue on the outside of this tab. And then I'm just going to lay it flat like that. And bring that piece over so they meet right in the middle there. Like that. Then again, I'm going to give that a little time to dry before we start putting the bottom in. So let's set that aside and we'll bring this piece in. So we have these score lines, we've already angled the tabs here. So let's fold those up. And then this is just going to fit right into the bottom. It's going to come up like that. Bring this in. It's going to fit right over top of that. Like so. So we want to put our glue onto the outside. So those are in place. All we need to do is just tip it over and start to press it into place with my bone folder. I could load it with and there we have it now if you wanted to you could decorate it more on the outside you could put sentiments on here of some sort maybe your initial thing so it was as fast and easy as that I hope you'll have a go at this yourself and perhaps make a rainbow of mini milk crates for your craft desk. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm sorry that uh, it was a while before I was able to get back to filming, but I hope now to be more on track. So please, if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, do so today. And thank you to all of you who have already subscribed. I do hope that you have a lovely day or evening, wherever you are. And please stay safe and crafty hugs. Bye.